So, dark is covered the face of the deep, while a wave from God swept over the face of the waters. Is that what your text says? Yes. Yeah. Good. Listen, both in Hebrew and in Greek, the word for wind can be translated as soul, soul or yes. spirit, or breath. Remember God breathing into the nostrils of Adam? So what does this text tell us about God? Or, even better translation for us as Christians, Spirit. And we call that the Holy Spirit of God. Right? Again, we are Christians reading into a Jewish text. It's not really fair. It's not really fair what we're doing. But we cannot stop being Christians while we're reading these texts. These are our texts as well. This is not just the Hebrew Bible. This is the Christian Bible as well. You understand? And so all of a sudden we learn that there is a God as Christians, and that there is a spirit from God, right? Very good. What else does God have in verse 3? Did you notice how I asked the question? What else does God have in verse 3? A voice. A voice. And if you're a Christian, you would say he has a theological term. In Greek, is logos. Or word. And God said, let there be like the word of God. And who is the word of God? Jesus. Jesus. Do you understand? Do you understand? Uh, sure. Yes. Cuvântul lui Dumnezeu. The word of God. The Word became incarnate. The Word took flesh. Cuvântul Dumnezeu s-a Right? So we Christians look into this and we go, that's our God. The Father, with the Spirit, with the Word. As a matter of fact, Psalm 33, verse 6, is not in your text, it's in my cheese sheet. It says, and it's not in the Bible. It says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. The Lord, his word, and his breath. And that's in Psalm 33, which is a book written by Jews for Jews. And it's already saying that God has a breath, a spirit. And that God has a spirit, and God has a word. His word we also know as his son. So when we do the cross, we did it in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christians, writers can look at these three verses of Genesis and say, the Trinity is there. It's like a seed, right? It's not fully explicit yet. But there are some words that are really making you think, and they're making Jews think, because they felt compelled to put it in Psalm 33, that God created the world through His Spirit and through His Word. Very good. How far did we get? Verse 3. Keep on going? Yes. Just a little bit. Bear with me. Just a little bit longer. Okay, very soon. I have my timer on. Put my on and then we'll go going on. So God said, the let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day. He called the darkness night. So all of a sudden, darkness is not a bad thing, right? Night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Is that how you would say there was evening and there was morning the first day? How would you say it? Morning and evening. Morning and evening was first day. Right, very good, very good. But when you go to church, did you know this? For Vespers, you do the service for the next day? Because in the Jewish tradition, the day begins at sunset. <laughs> sunset. At earth set the night before. So for example, in uh, Israel, if I want to buy anything, I have to go before Friday night at sunset, because after that, all the stores are closed. Until Saturday at sunset, that's it. Somehow, interestingly, they go by 24 hours after that. I also was there in the month of Ramadan, when the Muslims fast, and so uh, the whole day, they're not allowed to eat or drink anything, and I happened to be in the old city of Jerusalem, close to sunset, or earth set, and I could not eat a thing because everybody was in line, waiting for a few more minutes for darkness, and then go and eat and drink. Which is understandable in that heat, not to eat and drink anything, right? 
It's understandable. And yes, Orthodox Christians who have fasting in our tradition we should be inspired to go back to our traditions. Yes. But back to this one. In the Jewish tradition, the day starts in the evening and then it's in the morning. Same with us as Orthodox Christians. When we go to church, the day starts in the evening, right? Because we do the Vespers for the previous day. We usually say after 4 o'clock. We don't go by sunset and sundown. After 4 o'clock, you can do the Vespers. So you do the Sunday Vespers on one day of the week. Saturday. Does that make sense? Very good. Do some of you have uh, evening liturgies? Are these allowed, evening liturgies? Do, some, do any of them have evening liturgies? No, because I would have given the example that it happens in the evening before, right? Of a certain day. But, um, very good. So what do you understand here? There is a day, and by day, what do we mean? No, I have time. Hmm? Okay, how, many would, how much would we say today, in today's terms? 24 hours. I keep on looking at you. So it's very important, because you raised the question with science and religion. Yours. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Because I'm not going to tell you, this has nothing to do with days as 24 hours. Here it's very important, 24 hours. In the Bible, does a day always mean 24 hours? No. Let's go back to what did God tell Adam and Eve. Do not eat of the tree of good knowledge of good and evil for... When? For that day, that day, you will surely die. Adam and Eve lived many years after that and had a bunch of kids together, right? Hundreds of years, everybody living. So obviously, a day, excuse me? So obviously it's not in the same day. <laughs> so sometimes I'm going to tell you a day is not 24 hours. And other times I'm going to tell you a day is 24 hours. It depends on what I want to accomplish. <laughs> okay? So when it comes to going, this Bible is not creationist. I'm going to tell you a day is not 24 hours. When it comes to telling you the point of the story, I'm going to tell you a day is 24 hours. But you've got to be patient. No. For all we know, we're still in the seventh day. Well, no, 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 it, it ended. When? <laughs> it doesn't say exactly when <laughs> it ended. No, no, it doesn't because the story ends itself, right? But uh, uh, it just says that, the, that God rested on it. So we don't know when. As Christians, we actually believe we're in the eighth day. Boom. Blow your mind. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that right now. We'll talk about that. The eighth day is the day of the resurrection because it comes after the Sabbath. Right? Sunday is the day after the resurrection. I know! I shouldn't have been brought it up. It's not there with me. It's too late at night. So, st stop, stop. There are seven days in the week. Don't talk about the eighth day. Just forget about it. Could we erase it? Okay, thank you. So, back to the story. 24 hours. How do you know a day begins? Come on. The sun comes up, because they think the sun comes up, right? Uh, actually, no, the sun goes down, right, because it's evening and then morning. Very good. And the day ends after that. What's the problem? Excuse me. Could you please tell us again when the sun was created? Fourth day. Fourth day. Whoops! <laughs> These are very intelligent people, okay? We're never going to say they don't know. They know exactly what they're writing in here. These are very intelligent people. Who will tell you, listen, I'm talking about physical day and physical darkness. There's a way to sanitize the text. Oh, the light is about the uncreated energies of God. It's the divine light that emanates from God. Baloney! It, excuse me. I meant it's... No! No, 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 no. This is very important. It's a 24-hour day. Separate from darkness, morning, evening, day, and night. And yet, the sun was the fourth day, right? But what was created? The earth. 